Welcome, coming to you live from Usprung Gymnasium inside the Lou Higgins Center on campus of Baldwin Wallace University. It's time for some BW Wrestling tonight as the number nine nationally ranked BW Wrestling team squares off against OAC rival Ohio Northern. Thanks for joining me this evening. I am Cade Mickley, joined by special guest. Uh, Seamus Birmingham. <laughs> we have a good broadcast for you on Slate tonight. First, we'll look at BW, who comes into tonight's match with a record of 19-3 and in a 3-0 and in OAC action. The Jackets had a school record for wins in the season with 39-6 I mean, to six victory over Muskinium, excuse me. On Tuesday, BW has won 10 straight OAC dual matches with its last loss coming in February 3rd, 2015. So this, uh, this very same day, two years ago at University of Mount Union, like I said. This season, the Jackets are led by Anthony Arroyo and a couple other guys. Seamus, how about you tell us about all these guys? Uh, well, Arroyo and uh, Zach Lehman and uh, Ben Huff and um, Richard Burke, those are all up-and-coming guys. You know, they're just sophomores, kind of. I mean, they were in the lineup last year, but now really they're solidifying their place on the team and winning big matches and collecting six and, you know, really doing big things for the BW wrestling program. So it's really exciting to see those guys. And even it's even pretty exciting to see uh, a couple of freshmen, you know, make it into the lineup. We had Nick Barry over the weekend wrestle uh, at um, Wheaton, and uh, I think he placed. Um, I want to say he placed seventh, which is pretty big for uh, you know a freshman. Yeah, that's huge. Underclassmen get all the experience. It's very helpful later on. But this program has been built by Coach Gibbs, where the g older guys continue to pass down some knowledge and some skill to young guys. You see, coaches like Garrett Chase, who was a wrestler last year, come yeah. back and contribute to the yeah. program. Can you tell us a little bit about what goes inside the program to make it so successful? Well, I think what makes it so success successful is that we're so tight-knit, and every it's almost like a family, you know, and everybody's on the same page. And Coach preaches a lot about goals and, you know, living out those goals and being, you know, as we call it JTM, having a jack of tough mentality, and it's almost like a culture and a lifestyle in a sense, you know. So... Well, all of us being on the same page and striving towards that one goal, you know, everybody holds each other accountable, and everybody is just, you know, just on that same page, and they're just working and working and working. And it and certainly led to success, obviously, as the last OAC loss, like we said, come February 3rd, 2015. But tonight, the Jackets take on a tough opponent in the Pole Bears of Ohio Northern, who have a record of 10-2 and on the season and 3-0 and in OAC duels. ONU comes off a 30 to 9 victory over Otterbein University, a very young program, first year for that program, if I'm correct. Yep. This past Tuesday. They're led by some young guys as well. Let me see if I can see some stats. Uh, starting off at 125, a freshman, Seth Transu, is 16 and 13 on the season. Not bad for a freshman in the starting lineup. No. Their heavyweight, Nathan. Kaski is 22 and 7, another freshman from Moon Area High School. Another tough matchup tonight. Who do you think are going to be some of the more marquee matchups? What weight classes should we be watching out for? Um, let me set that statue real quick. I mean, let's see what we got. We got four. Probably that 125 matchup will be huge because we got Doyle wrestling. Um, and that uh, every single 125 matchup I think is huge if you get into these big dual meets because you want to start off on the right foot, obviously with a dub. And um, 157 too, that looks like a tough matchup for Ben. And uh, of course, like the big ticket, like Anthony Arroyo, try and go out there and get the stick and get six. Yeah, and you mentioned Benjamin Hoff in place of, I think originally David Shapiro was slated. Ben Hoff on the season 19 and 11 with five majors. Uh, he's, he's, he's been huge this season. He's been able to step in because when either dudes have been injured or you know they're taking a rest and they need a rest, he's been able to step in and get some big wins and wrestle some big time opponents and do really well against them. And it being only his sophomore season, he's got a lot of time to you know perfect his craft. Last week, uh, not last week, this past Tuesday, Benjamin had a really quick match going out there, completely owning opponent from a skinium. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sure his confidence is high right now. Well that's another thing with him is every time I see him come out there and wrestle he looks a little bit more confident. 
and you know you can kind of see it like there's been a little bit of a swagger in his walk and when he goes out and his like mat presence uh, like as those matches go on and as he's you know getting more experience he's getting more confident in his shots his takedowns you know and that's huge all right the national anthem is coming up we'll be back to you shortly thank you for listening to bon Lo Wallace wrestling Okay, uh, so for tonight's lineup at 125, we're going to be having uh, Chris Doyle wrestling Seth uh, Transu from Ohio Northern. And at 33, we'll have Charlie Nash from BW against Brad Patton, a junior from Ohio Northern. At 141, we'll have Joshua Decatur uh, versus Aiden uh, Paribon, who's a freshman from Ohio Northern. And at 149, we'll have Richie, uh, Richie Burt 
versus Dylan Dolph, the junior from Ohio Northern. And at 157, we'll have Benjamin Hoof, a sophomore from BW, against Gavin Nelson, um, a sophomore from, Gal from uh, Ohio Northern. And at 165, we'll have Anthony Arroyo, a sophomore from BW, against Seth Meyer, a junior from Ohio Northern. At 174, we'll have Bo Ransom from BW versus Clayton Davidson from Ohio Northern, who's a sophomore. And at 184, we'll have Zachary Lehman, a sophomore from BW, against Alex Blair from Ohio Northern. And for 197, we'll have Tyler McClellan, a junior from BW, against Evan Hickey, from uh, a junior from Ohio Northern. And at 285, we'll have Andrew Swarovski, a junior from BW, against Nathan uh, Barkaski, a uh, freshman from Ohio Northern. Yes, for those of you just now joining us, I am Kay Mickley, joined tonight by Seamus Bringer. No, no, not Bringer, sorry. Birmingham. Birmingham. <laughs> Seamus is a part of the BW wrestling team. We're fortunate to have him tonight with us. Get a little bit more insight on, as to what goes into the BW team and then their opponents themselves, the High Northern Bears, who come to tonight undefeated in the OAC. So what does this match mean in the OAC standings right now? Well, right now, wrapping up the OAC dual season, we have um, Ohio Northern tonight. Um, next Tuesday, we have Heidelberg, and the week after, we have uh, Mount Union. So, I mean, it's really, all these dual meets coming up are huge in, as far as standing and, you know, fighting for that OAC championship. So, it should be a pretty, it should be a pretty good one, a pretty big one tonight, because Ohio Northern's ranked 20th in the nation. Yes, this is a top 25 matchup with Ohio Northern ranked 20th and BW ranked 9th the nation BW's only two losses uh, three losses yeah come in within a uh, top 10 ranked teams on the season including yep. the number one ranked team in the nation so this has not been an easy schedule no no by it any means BW has completed it very well thus far yeah absolutely and we've, we've I mean that's part of the process too is um, you know wrestling every week we have all those tough opponents we're out wrestling top 10 kids and top 10 programs, you know? Sort of like the iron sharpens uh, iron metaphor, you know? Like always trying to get those top matchups and winning those big matches, and it means a lot as far as seeding and, uh, and future tournaments. Yes, it does. As we get started right now, the 125 matchup between Chris Doyle and Seth Trinsu, a freshman from Dublin High School with a record of 16 and 13 from ONU. Fast action right now. We got the headlock in right now. Doyle's on the, he's trying to walk him back down, you know, put pressure on that head. Yeah, nice little knee tip right there by Doyle. Oh, a new recovery. Yeah. Stalemate. Immediately going back to that underhook. Possibly looking, was that a throw? Or is he looking for a trip right looking there? For a tr he's either looking for a trip or a throw. I th he likes that trip. Back on that head, trying to wear on his head. Oh, and you've got to work for hands here. Both wrestlers showing a lot of action at this point right now. But in the lighter weights, we'll see that the action's kind of a little bit faster. Yeah, a little bit faster pace than the heavyweights. Maybe not quite as many pins in the lower weights. No. A little bit harder to get that weight down. You see Doyle just working on that head, you know, trying to wear on his neck. Yeah, it's going to be big in the later periods. Yeah, in the third period, you know. Doyle doing a good job. Oh, I know that he's got to climb this leg. About a, a minute 30 left in this first period. Getting a little bit of scramble situation, some good action. Both wrestlers looking for that advantage, nothing Ohio right now. Oh, I know they're trying to hold on to that leg there. Doyle did a good job scrambling out from a compromising position, but they're back even. Doyle still on that headlock, still trying to wear on him. Trancy trying to get that leg. Trancy doing a good job blocking off that spin by Doyle. Great job. Very nice scramble situation right now. Both wrestlers not wanting to give up that takedown. Mm -hmm. Doyle's trying to wear on that grip, you know, and get that spin behind. Nice little knee tip again right there. Transu is staying tough on this leg. But this has to be wearing him down. 
all that energy trying to block him off and score those two points. I think that's going to show up a little bit later in this match. Yeah, without a doubt. And again, just that shuck right to the front headlock. Yep. It's just staying and on that head. Doyle just trying to spin, get that two before this first period's up. Still got about 20 seconds left. Transu just staying on that leg, though. Doyle's got to get his hips back and try and score two here with nine seconds left. Very high energy first period so far. If this is any indication for the rest of the night, I think we're in store for a great night. We had a great first period. Doyle was relentless with that um, with that headlock attack. And Transu was not giving up that takedown at all. Going to the second period, no score given to yep, either wrestler. Tristan chooses down this period. Doyle will be on top. Doyle doing a good job blocking off that initial stand up right there. Staying on that wrist. Trying to spiral right it looks like. Maybe tight waist. Can't really tell from here. Doyle working those legs in, trying to work on that shoulder. He has to be careful. He was a little high right there. Oh, Trantu scrambling out, back on that leg. What Doyle Doyle's do sticking with it. He's a lot of cradle locked up. He's on his back. He has a leg hook, We're too. We're swiping points. Good effort by Trantu to get off that back. But he's got to work up now. That was Great awareness He's by Doyle right there. He's looking for some more back points. You can't get him to break 90. Doyle back in on that leg. Just trying to wear on his lower back. There's four back points for Doyle. has that leg still locked. Can't really tell what he's trying to work right there. He's trying to get that arm underneath. He's trying get to get that power half. Doyle kicks out a leg and he's working for something else. Maybe trying to get that wrist on his back. Trantu's got to work up off bottom here. We're looking for a tilt, tight waist tilt right now. We're swiping points. Only a three count. Doyle doing a good job keeping his pressure forward, not giving Transu any room to get up. The ref is still holding two. Two more back Doyle points for Doyle. Doyle is approaching two minutes of riding time as he has not given up the escape for this period, and he does get the two minutes of riding time. That was a great period for Doyle. He got the wear on him a lot, and he stayed on top and gathered up those two minutes of riding time. That's going to be hard to erase. Yeah, Transu almost looked like he about got away or reversed Doyle, but Doyle did a great job scrambling back into that cradle and getting those four initial back points. Yeah. Trusting yeah. his wrestling and sticking with that cradle, man. Doyle looking for a switch right there, working his, get to, getting to Transu's leg. Transu's doing a nice job fighting off the single leg with the wizard. Trying to back in on that leg, trying to work his way up. Got that turk. Doyle trying to funk. Got some good scrambling going on in period three. Well, coaching staff's animated, standing up, encouraging their wrestlers right now. BW is coached by Coach Jamie Gibbs in his sixth year. Already has one OAC title under his belt. And ONU is led by Coach Ron Beschler. With assistants Kyle Quate, Jace Saug, Luke Miller, and Cody Lovejoy. Chris Doyle still on bottom. Looking to get that ankle, looking for a reversal. Trancy is scrambling well here. Doyle was Doyle almost, able, almost able to backdoor it. And there's a reversal. Still got that turk. Doyle's back up to a minute of riding time. Scores now 8 nothing in favor of Chris Doyle. Doyle's 
toe back in on that leg. A major decision here would be huge for BW to start off the evening. A lot of these matches pit two very qualified wrestlers against one another. Doyle has about 23 seconds left to work with, not give up any points, possibly add a few more of his own if you were so to choose. There's stalling on red. Doyle doing a nice job, just kind of working into the end of the period, picking up the major. At those, those team points are real big for, um, you know, dual meets like this. There's a little the bit of scuffle whistle. at the end of the match. Things are getting a little heated. A little bit of pushing there at the end. Transuit a little upset. Match didn't go his way. Bill did a great job though. Entire match, keep it under control. Next up, 133, we have Brad Tanton Jr. versus Charlie Nash from BW. Nash, 21 and nine on the season. We're gonna pick up number win number 22. And Nash has been tearing it up this season. He's only he's only a freshman. Brad Tanton, a junior from Lake Catholic High School with a record of 17 and 16 on the season. One and two in the OAC. Both wrestlers kind of feeling each other out. There's a shot. Tanton in on that leg. Tanton. There, there's two, two for Tanton from ONU. Nash looking for a stand up, possibly a switch. Tanton's keeping a lot of pressure going forward on top. Some action here on the edge. And there's an escape by Charlie Nash. Score now 1-2. Ryan time is not a factor right now. Nash a little bit longer than uh, Brad Tenton from ONU. Has to use that length to his advantage. Charlie Nash on that uh, on that front headlock trying to wear on him a little bit. Snapping him. Stealing a little bit of a uh, playbook from Chris Doyle. Heavy on the head, wear down his opponent. You could definitely see it at the later stages of that last match. In the third period. Charlie Nash that underhook. Tanton on that single leg. Nash trying to wizard and get that foot to the mat. Tanton's got that other ankle, and that's two. two. Score is now four to one in favor of Tanton. Tan just doing a nice job working his way up the leg and getting to that ankle to finish the two. And just keep he's keeping that pressure tough on top. Nash has got to find a way to escape here with only 40 seconds left. And there's another escape. The score is now two to four in favor of Brad Tanton from LNU. About 25 seconds left in this first period. Nash staying heavy on that head. Trying to wear him down a little bit. Both wrestlers in the center of the mat right now. Charlie looking for that snap down. Tan again looking for that single leg. Let's see if he can score two here. Two seconds left. We got some action. No two. Both wrestlers working very hard that first period. Two single legs led to four points for Brad Tanton out of ONU. We're going neutral second period. Don't see this too often. No. Nash getting his fakes working, trying to change levels, get him moving a little bit. I'd like to see Nash incorporate more of a uh, circle style, change his direction, get some fakes in there as well. Tanton trying to use his strength to his advantage. A little bit stockier. Yeah. Just get him in, get that shot to that single for Fireman's potentially. Nash back on that head. He just keeps wearing on that neck. We're definitely going to see that play out in the third period. Right now, Brad Tanton has 43 seconds of riding time. He's back on that leg. 
Nice There's little two. double leg by Brad Tanton out of ONU. Scores now 6 2. Approaching a minute of riding time. Nash's got to find a way to get up here. Still a minute left in the second period. Both yeah. wrestlers on the edge of the mat. Tan back around that leg. Tan has a very sudden change, like uh, level change. He's very powerful with that single leg. Single to that double. Tan just got hit with the stall call for hanging out on that leg too long. That could be huge. 45 seconds left in the second period. Tan doing a good job pressuring forward. Yeah, fighting off that switch. Nash has got to find a way to get his head off the mat, build the base, and get some hands. And Tan's doing a great job just pressuring forward and keeping that pressure on him throughout yeah. the whole match. There's an escape by Charlie Nash. Scores now 3-6 to six in favor of Brad Tan. Minute 32 of riding time in favor, though, and you wrestler. About 10 seconds left in the second period. There, Charlie Nash shooting for a single leg. Back on that headlock. Short and time, no two. Second period, we sort of saw more of the same. You know, Tanton was keeping that pressure forward on top, even in neutral, getting back on that leg and finishing with two. Great job of changing the levels for that single leg to double. Nash is real good on top here, so let's see what he can do. He likes that cradle. Tan trying to keep that base out. Mm -hmm. Like we said earlier, he's a little bit more stocky than Charlie Nash from BW. Charlie should probably be using his length to his, maybe throw some legs in. Start torquing on him a little bit. Big yeah. lift by Charlie Nash. He's eating away in that riding time, approaching a minute again. Try to make that not a factor. Mm. There's stalling red. There's one point There's for one. Charlie Nash, who does it. have a leg in at this He's point. He's on that cradle. He's got that cradle locked up. Let's see what he could do. But like we said, Tan's a strong kid. He's not budging. And there, Charlie's looking for a cradle still. He's still got that leg in. Tan doing a great job of just sort of basing out, you know, getting he his is. head away from his yeah, knee. Great job with his upper body just not budging at all. Charlie does have the cradle locked up. Back He's looking for a turn. Cradle. And every time the Tan, there's another stalling. Score is now five to six with 45 seconds left. Nash needs a turn here. A quick two count gives him the match. About 30 seconds left. Stalemate is called. Again, the score is five to six in favor of Brad Tanton from ONU. Riding time is not a factor. Five seconds left. A two stall call. Uh, five seconds of stall, uh, riding time in favor of Brad Tanton. Excuse me. Again, Charlie Nash just keeping his pressure forward, looking for a quick turn. Tanton's got to stay tough here. Tanton has to call. at least put a little bit of effort into trying to stand up. About 15 seconds left. Charlie Nash looking for a cradle. He has it locked up. See if he can get it. Oh! And there's the turn. That is huge. And the stick and the fall. And a pin by Charlie Nash. The comeback in the third period. Like we said, Brad Tan was not giving up anything. But possibly... Great All that head pressure now. early in the match led to that. And the BW bench is juiced right now. The gym is fired up currently. Huge comeback win with the pin on top. Next up, we have the 140 pound weight class, 141 pound weight class with Aiden Pierborn, a freshman with a 14 to 16 record, going against Josh Decatur from BW. Josh is senior from CVCA. Looking for another OAC win. Josh trying to get that motion going and uh, 
Aiden, you know, trying to stay low in that stance, gets that three-point stance where he's got his hand on the mat, trying to make uh, Josh's stance in motion. You know, those fakes not really count. Decatur's very fast. I think Josh knows that. He's just trying to keep him in front of him. Or Aiden, excuse me. <laughs> and again, Josh yeah. working that head just like all the other BW wrestlers before him. Keep that heavy head. You can tell that's something we work on in practice a lot. Great outside sweep by Decatur right there. Just trying to get around and get his two. Looking for two. a trip. There's the two. Trying to get that suck back, get a quick two. Decatur gives up the escape. One more escape. Neutral is more Decatur's uh, forte. Use his speed to his advantage, as you saw in that first takedown. Both wrestlers doing a good job trying to stay in the middle of the mat. No breaks in the action. Aiden staying low. Got that hand on the mat, trying to work up to the tie up. Quick snap to a single. Fed it off great by Josh Decatur. Josh trying to pass that elbow, get to a single leg. Aiden trying to get that wrist control to slow down Decatur a little bit, work his own offense. Both wrestlers in the tie up. Both fighting for position, you know, trying to get a leg open. Under a minute now in this first period. Again, the team score is now 10 0 in favor of BW after that major decision and pin in the first two matches. And there, Aiden does a good job, changes his level. Decatur tried to get that cross pick, getting his leg back. Decatur did a great job. Back on that double leg. Fighting that off, and there's another takedown for Josh Decatur. 30 seconds left to go in this first period. Two on the edge of the mat. If you could hold him down for the rest of this uh, period, that would be huge. You just have to keep a toe in bounds now. And that is what Decatur is doing currently. About 10 seconds left in this first period, and now they're out. Decatur going to look for a, you know, a quick little breakdown here. Try and buy him 10 seconds of riding time and get out of this period without giving up an escape point. Aiden's got to try and get out, you know, get that point. Make it only a two point deficit going into that second period. Decatur in a crab ride. Aiden did not look for that immediate stand up. He said he was trying to play that longer game, sit out, stand up, work up. Decatur rides him out to end out the finish, uh, the first period. Aiden picks the bottom for the second period. Riding time still not a factor, although Decatur's got 40 seconds. Tonight, Yellow Jacket Wrestling Match is brought to you by Dan Andrews and, and Olympic Forest Products at Global Recycling Company. They're Aiden Kilborn from ONU, trying to work his own offense at this point. Just a nice shot attempt. I think at this point, Aiden wants to play that collar game, that tie up game. Trying to wear on his mat. Trying to wear on Josh's neck. Slow down his slow motion him down. a little bit. Decatur doing a great job blocking off Aiden's shots with that underhook right there. Now that s snap down, pressure on the head. Decatur doing a great job of fighting off these shots. Aiden's relentless, though. Decatur looking for those shot reshots against Aiden. There, quick great outside sweep. Decatur's got to work up. Aiden's got to sprawl back here. You got a little bit of a scramble situation. Aiden trying to scoot behind. Hook that lace. Decatur working his way up. And there's the two. two points. Score is now 6-2 in favor of Josh Decatur from BW. Still does not have a minute of writing time. There's an escape. Pure bond. Decatur getting his motion going again. Josh has to be careful about backing up so much. Might get hit with the stalling. 
Yeah, he's doing a great job keeping the pressure on. Yes, he's he got to find a way to get to that single leg and finish. About 10 seconds left in the second period. Again, the score is 6-3. to three. Brian time is not a factor. We go to the third period. Decatur will go down. Look for a quick escape. Possible reversal. Aiden reading in, uh, eating in that writing time that Josh had built up, even though it wasn't a factor to begin with. Now 45 seconds. Decatur looking to stand up right now. Aiden dropping to that single leg. Aiden doing a great job getting pressure forward right off the whistle, you know, keeping Josh's head on the mat. At the same time, he has to be looking for points himself as he's down by three in the third period. As we get reset, we got a caution on top. Came in a little bit too hard, too fast for the officials liking. Still keeping that pressure forward. Josh looking for some hand control. Work to stand up. There he has Kate both hands. Get that one. Scores now 7-3 in favor of Josh Decatur from BW. Both wrestlers back in the center of the mat. Minute 15 left in this third period. is still keeping that motion going even with a minute left in the third period trying to get to that single leg Aiden's heavy on that head trying to get that spin behind Decatur Russell on the edge of the mat Decatur a little bit more tired right now his shot not quite as quick as it was earlier in the match we got some action going on here at the edge of the mat Aiden trying to push that head down maybe try and snap and then bomb to get that spin behind Decatur has that hand control though and there's stalemate called both wrestlers are neutral about 45 seconds left wrestlers in that collar tie right now. Got some good hand fighting going on in the center of the mat. Josh. Decatur with that fake going back on that single leg. Aiden did a good job fighting that one off. Trying to hit a shot of his own right there. About 20 seconds left. Decatur is not backing down at all. Keeps going in for that single leg. Trying to finish with a two. Expand upon that lead a little bit. Aiden's got to do something here. About five seconds left. It looks like this match will end up 7-3 in favor of Josh Decatur. Picking up another three points for the Jackets. That puts our match score at 13-0 um, in favor of BW. Next up at the 149-pound weight class, we have Dylan Dolph, a junior with a 14-11 and record from ONU against Richard Burke with a 12-8 and record. Burke, another one of those sophomores in the lineup. Really doing big things for the program this year. Immediately both wrestlers tie up. Burke looking for that. He's got that, that Russian off. tie. Yeah. Russian tie up. Trying to wear on his shoulder, maybe put it to the mat. Looking for that trip, to that single, dunk. that high crotch. Off doing a good job just staying low. Still a hand fighting at the center of the mat. Burke's still trying to work for that fireman with that uh, Russian tie. Really wearing on that shoulder. We'd like to remind you tonight's Yellow Jacket Wrestling match is being brought to you by Domino's Pizza. Call Separia 440. 891-0030 or go online at www.dominos.com as we have some more action right now. Dolph is deep on that leg. 
Burke looking for looking for a light cradle. Let's see if he can pull it off. Dolph staying tough on that single. He's not giving anything up. There we got a stalemate. I was wondering when the official was going to call that one. Either wrestler really had a chance to score any points right there. Both wrestlers trying to get that hand control, using their heads to block off some shots. Both of them very lanky. If you hear some uh, some screaming in the background, tonight we are joined by the Olmstead Falls Biddy Wrestling Program. Glad to have them here tonight. Love to see the sport of wrestling grow in the youth. They got a chance to sit in the student section with all the BW wrestlers, so we got a we got a strong show of the kids here today, man. There, burst working that headlock, looking for a trip, that heavy on the head. About under a minute now, no points have been awarded either way. Both wrestlers doing a really good job at just fighting one another off, using their heads, block off shots, hand fighting. Back to the center. Burke trying to wear on that head a little bit, get on that shoulder, maybe get back to that two on one. Burke doing a good job just putting his weight on Dolph's back, just wearing him out a little bit, making him work a little bit harder, looking for that trip right there. Just about 10 seconds left in this first period. Great defensive match so far. Yeah, both dudes just being stingy, not letting each other get any sort of tie-up or getting to each other's legs, sort of just, you know, wearing on each other and feeling each other out. Going to the second period, zip, zip. Burke declines. Dolph chooses down. Looking for a quick escape. Burke real tough on top. Trying to get to that uh, cross face, maybe hook up a cradle here. Don't be surprised if he throws his legs in. Looking for it right now, actually. Dolph doing a good job, though, blocking it off. Yeah. Not let him throw the legs in. Burke. There, it looks like Burke's going for that cradle. Not really sure if he had it close. Still just working on Dolph. Real quick stand up, and he's up and away. And we're neutral. Burke did not want to give up that stand up. Fought very hard to keep him down. Both wrestlers back in the center of the mat, just working those tie ups. Burke back on the head, still just wearing on him. You see, that's a common theme. Under a minute now in, that, in the second period. Scores 1-0 in favor of Dolph. Dolph. And on that leg. Burke using his hips though, just pressuring him down. Dolph just sort of hanging out down there. He's got to find a way to work his way up. Burke's got that ankle hooked. Two, Two points. points. Takedown, he almost had that cradle locked up, that near leg cradle. Burke got that leg in. Going back to that cross face. This is sort of his bread and butter here. He likes to put that leg in, wear on a guy, get a cross face, maybe hook up a cradle. Dolph's got to sort of crawl forward with his knees and build a base, maybe try and get up and get one, get back to that neutral position. Yeah, there's about 10 seconds left. And now a minute of writing time in favor of Burke. Again, the score 2-1 in the second period. Team score 13-0 in favor of Fulton Wallace. Burke chooses down for the third period. Both wrestlers a little tired. They've been going hard one another defensively, just wearing on each other in those tie-ups. Dolph trying to wear away at that riding time a little bit, get it under a minute, make it no longer a factor in this close matchup. Burke doing a good job keeping his base. 
Golf dropping down to that single leg, not giving up. Burke looking for that Ooh, switch. That was slick. Dolph still on that leg though, not giving up too. Dolph hangs on and takes a stalling call, so he'll still retain the top position. How do you feel about that strategy there, Seamus? I think that's uh, I think that's pretty smart. You know, I've seen uh, a couple dudes on our team do it, and I've seen a couple dudes um, in pretty big tournaments do it and use it to their advantage. You know, he did have that stalling call to give, and it gives you it gives you a fresh start. And there, start. Burke, great job scrambling. There's escape. Looking for a fireman's right there. Back on that head. BW doing a great job being heavy on the head tonight, just wearing down their opponents. By the time the third period comes, they're just gassed. Burke doing a good job, just spinning him down. Another takedown by Burke. Scoring now 5-1. Under a minute now in the third period. Brian time approaching a minute again for Burke. Looking for a turn here. Get some more points. Get that major decision. Burke hanging out on that leg. Racking up that ride in time. And there's another stalling call on Dolph. Scores now 6-1 in favor of Burke, who now has a minute 20 of riding time. Burke, maybe get a quick turn here, you know, pick up a couple points, get that major decision. That'd be big in a duel like this. About five seconds left. Hard fought match. A lot closer to the score appears to be. 6 1 will be the final. I think one of the big differences was Burke being able to kind of, you know, impose his will on top, sort of wear on him. And again, coming into play is that headlock. Wearing on him first and second period, it comes down to the third period. Those dudes, it's, it, it wears a lot on your neck. You might not be able to, you know, sort of imagine that, but. Yeah, anyone that's wrestled knows how hard it is when someone's just laying on your head the entire time and you're fighting to keep it up. Score now 16 nothing in favor of BW, team score wise. Next up, we have Gavin Nelson, a sophomore from Oregon Clay High School, who's 17 and 8 on the season at the 157 pound weight class against Benjamin Hoff who's 19 and 11 on the season, looking for win number 20. Off oh, another member of that sophomore class that's been stepping in and doing some big things for us. Hoff is a real lanky dude. So um, Nelson is gonna try and stay low, you know, kind of keep him, uh, kind of make his uh, length not so much of a factor. You know, staying low, you see that three point stance, trying to get a wrist and work his way up. Hoff doing a great job hand fighting though and trying to maintain that inside control. Nice, nice little, little slide by. Both wrestlers just feeling each other out right now. There, Nelson just tries to get him in close, make that length not quite mu as much as a factor, use his strength to his advantage. Off trying to jack up that underhook. Oh, and there's a nice takedown by Gavin Nelson. Nelson trying to get that cross wrist tilt. Get a couple get a couple swipes. Hoff did a great job fighting that off and Back reversing. Reversal. Change of events now. Hoff's back on top. Or Nelson on top did for the first time. Nelson did get two back points right there though before Hoff reversed him. Huff trying to impose his will on top. Nelson's fighting those hands, maybe trying to get an escape on the edge. And there he does, score now 5-2. Favor of Gavin Nelson. Both wrestlers working their way back to the middle of the circle for some more action. Still a minute left in this first period. A lot of action so far. Yeah, we've had some good exchanges between the two. Nelson staying low, keeping that hand on the mat, that three-point stance. Huff's really got to kind of attack from the top or get his fakes going, try and uh, get Nelson to move his feet. Huff trying to get that misdirection single leg. 
That's his bread and butter right there. Now he's back on that uh, two on one. Nelson trying to hand fight, maybe get an underhook here. Hoff on that single leg. Nice single by Hoff right there. Working his way up. Nice wizard by Gavin though. Great Fights job. it off. Nelson he tries his own high crotch. Hoff's back on his head. Trying to wear on with that front headlock. About 15 seconds left in this first period. We got some action heading into the second period. Maybe see one of these two wrestlers could get uh, a two count would be huge for the two points. Looks like we'll be going to the second period. Score 5-2 in favor of Gavin Nelson, the sophomore from Oregon Clay High School. A powerhouse high school program in the state of Ohio, Division II level. Hoff will be on top. Gavin Nelson will be on bottom to start the second period. Hoff got that sort of crab ride going on. He's got that thigh fry and claw. Maybe try and suck him back here, get a quick two count. Moving that double thigh fry. I was never a fan of the suck back. It's, it's pretty easy to stand up if you don't get it back as we just saw right there. Absolutely, but you, get, you can get a nice quick two count. You're good with it. Both wrestlers in the center of the mat still. Score now 6-2 in favor of Gavin Nelson. Still a minute 20 of in the second period. Nelson's got that Russian tie. Trying to wear on Hoff a little bit here. Right. However, Hoff's got that head position. Nelson did a good job with that collar tie. Tried for that high crotch. Hoff did a good job fighting that off. And a reshot of his own. Huff back to a headlock. Trying to knee pick. Get those long arms in there. Both Nelson wrestlers just yeah. great scramble right there. Grinding. 47 seconds left in the second period. Doing a good job, just staying in the middle. Both wrestlers looking for something. Huff getting the action rolling, you know, kind of getting on that fake single leg up to a uh, underhook. Maybe try and do something here. He's Nelson's got to work his way back inside with his tie up. Both wrestlers have about 20 seconds left in the second period to make something happen. And there, Gavin Nelson, nice slide by that outside shot. Hoff has that underhook. Look for a trip. Looks like we're going to the third period. Score 6-2 in favor of Gavin Nelson from Ohio Northern. Ryan time is not a factor right now. 23 seconds in favor of Hoff. Hoff trying to get a quick one here. Expand that lead a little bit. Nelson does a good job breaking him down, just using his hips. Looks like he's trying to trap that leg. Hoff looking for that stand up. Nelson with a big lift. Hoff with a grand beat. Got some action here. Nelson did a good job sucking back on that. Almost got some back points. Not quite though. Almost got a few swipes there. That could have been big. But right now. Nelson did a really good job just holding him down, putting his pressure forward, making Hoff work Huff's really hard to get up. We're neutral. Score 3-6 three, uh, three in favor of Gavin Nelson from Ohio Northern. Looking for the first win of the night. Huff's got to push the pace here with a minute left with that misdirection single. He has to finish it a little faster than that, though. He's driving in. He lost a little bit of his balance. Trying to get that up tank. We got some awesome action coming down in the last minute of this match. Huff There's with the two. two. Now, what do you do here? You cut him or you try and turn him? I was always a fan of cutting him, working my magic at uh, the neutral position. But, you know, it's whatever you're comfortable with as a wrestler. If you feel like you can turn the guy, you go ahead and turn him. Now, now Huff's got to stay on him. Huff's, Huff's got to stay on him right now.
needs to take down, needs to ride him out. Huff's got to push that pace. There has been no stallings in this match, so that is not a factor as well. It's a very close match, 5-7. We got the BW. Got Nelson. Nelson looking for a throw right there. Hoff has to score. He has about 15 seconds left to score. It's big here. Both wrestlers back in neutral. Got There's nine a stalling. seconds coming out of the weather, the inside trip. About five seconds. If he can get another stalling call. Three, two, one, that and that leg. will be it. What a great match. Huff what a can't finish. Do. We had a lot of action in that match. That was a great match. Huff fought back. Gavin Nelson has the W. ONU's first W of the night. Seven to five. Next up at the 165 pound weight class, we have Seth Meyer, Jr. from Defiance. A 15 and 12 on the season, three and zero in the OAC. Look for some big moves in this match where Anthony Arroyo's, uh, he likes those throws, he's a pinner. And as you said, sophomore Anthony Arroyo, 165, 22 and three on the season, and immediately, Arroyo's going for that throw, he can't, he slips, winds up giving up two. Quick two from Meyer. There, Anthony looking for a switch, has a headlock. Should be neutral, so for no break. He looks for that roll through. There's two point reversal. Arroyo with that gator roll. Nice gator roll. Wow, Northern coach is a little bit upset. He doesn't think that was two, enough to merit a reversal. He still thinks that his wrestler should still be in control and gaining riding time. He almost was able to get that reversal, and there's the escape. Both wrestlers neutral. Scores 3-2, favor Seth Meyer. Both wrestlers kind of feeling each other out here. A lot of action big, early, yeah. Yeah, we've seen a couple big moves by Arroyo, but um, Meyer, you know, just staying in good position. And again, Anthony's just trying to jack him up with those double underhooks. That's the thing that happens, though, when you look for those big moves. Sometimes you get caught, and there, Anthony has that trip. Two point takedown. Almost got some back points. Right there, that arm bar. Um, Meyer doing a good job, though, you know, not, not hanging out on his back. Immediately rolls to his stomach, but Anthony looking for that turn. That was tight. Meyer doing a great job fighting that off. I can tell you that hurts. Anthony hitting move I used to love to hit in high school. That arm bar, man. That arm bar. Drag it over the top of the head. It's hard to get out of. There's a lot of pressure on that shoulder. That shoulder and that head. Anthony looking for that pin in the first period. It'd be huge for BW. Trying to get six for the Jackets. Doesn't quite get it. Does get four back points though. Meyer fights his way out and almost gets a reversal there, but Arroyo staying in good position following his hips. Meyer's not backing down at all. Anthony oh. looking for another turn. Great job. It's that lazy leg. A little bit of bow and arrow. Two and arrow more back there. points for Anthony Arroyo. Arroyo. Scoring out 10 3. Anthony has a minute 10 of Ryan time, has a leg in right now, looking for a couple more points. Arroyo able to slip that two count in before the first period ends. He's putting up some points in the first period. Very quick. Score now 12 3. Minute 17 of Ryan time in favor of Anthony Arroyo. Let's see who chooses bottom. If you're Meyer here, what do you look to hit, Seamus? Quick tilt. Get some garbage points, man. Try and tilt him up. Maybe a quick two count. Just try and chip away at that lead, you know? Yeah. If nothing else, you do not want to give up that tech fall or major decision. And there, Anthony has a quick escape. Anthony checking how much time he has left to work in the second period. Arroyo may be trying to go for something big again here with that front headlock. We've seen it twice so far. My 
Fire's got to fight those hands on that headlock and work his way up. Fisher wants to see both wrestlers work a little bit. Anthony has that tight front headlock, looking for that turn. Sides against it. Getting a fresh start here. Back to that underhook. That's his bread and butter right there. Meyer doing a good job fighting that off. Fighting for a single leg. It looks like something's bothering him, maybe an ankle or something. Yeah, Anthony doing a good job just shooting in. There's a stalling on Meyer. Doing a great job wrestling on the edge. Yeah, I agree with you, Seamus. Something looks like Meyer is being bothered by something. Both wrestlers look gassed right now. <laughs> hey, that'll happen when you're going for those big moves. There, nice double leg blast. Double leg. Anthony looking for a pin. If not a pin, a possible tech fall. Which would be huge for the Jackets. Not quite able to get that turn. About 20 seconds left in the second period. Royal kind of hanging out there looking for that cradle. He's got the leg in. Let's see if he's got something here. Meyer's got to try and get one. Anything he can get at this point. Anthony has four seconds left to get some points. Well, there's a few. He's getting swipes. He's got three swipes. Yep. That'll give him two points. Two back points. <laughs> Refs are trying to do some math to figure out if it's a tech ball or not. Some quick math. Not quite enough yet. Couple more back points, and it will be a tech ball. But in wrestling, anything can happen. You get caught on your back once. Only takes two seconds, man. There, Anthony immediately going for that cradle. Looks like he has it locked up. Just has to get him over. And, like, right there, he is caught. Arroyo going for that suicide cradle. That's dangerous, man. And, like we said, he was almost caught on his back. Yeah. Meyer doing a great job of recognizing that position and getting that arm posted out. Anthony was really looking to end it right there. Scoring out 17-5. Maybe a little bit too hasty. Anthony has a minute 40 of riding time built up though. Meyer's either got to get a quick tilt or something. He's got to get something going for him. He's only got a minute 15 left and Arroyo's got all those points in that riding time. There's a stalling on red. Oh, new coaches not pleased. I feel like most of the calls are not going their way tonight. There, Anthony looks for a quick switch. There's escape. Score 18, five, 19 to five, excuse me, for Anthony. Anthony looking for another takedown or two. Try and get some extra points. Possibly looking for that technical fall. Right now he has that major locked up. Yeah. We're all doing a re great job lowering his level. Blast double. Meyer, Meyer fights it off. Both wrestlers gassed. Anthony checks how much time he has left. <laughs> and again, he's going for that underhook about 15 seconds left now Meyer just not giving up any more points I think Arroyo is going to settle for the major here he's kind of counting uh, counting the seconds down yeah he keeps checking the little clock <laughs> I've been there, there should be the buzzer <laughs> up next we got Bo Ransom at uh 174, and he'll be wrestling Clayton Davidson. Sophomore from Kirtland with a 23 and 11 record. Bo Ransom sort of just entering the season here in the second half. Um, placing at uh, Wheaton, I think he placed fifth. You know, doing big things, kind of just stepping into the program and trying to find his place. And after that win by Anthony Arroyo, the score is now 21-3 in favor of the Yellow Jackets of BW. Wrestlers on the collar tie right now.
trying to get that two-on-one -on -one rush, it looks like. Yeah, Davidson's fighting for that. With the, he got a like, nice little arm drag. Bo's wearing on that head, trying to, you know. And there's a nice double leg. Great wrestling on the edge. Davidson with a nice setup there. Davidson choosing an optional start. We don't see that too often anymore. No, maybe trying to, you know, let him up. A lot of times you'll see guys do that optional start and they'll start letting him up and they'll come out to the front real quick and try and hit him with a whip over a cement mixer. You know, try and get that maybe a little bit of surprise. A little bit of momentum behind him too. Yeah. None of that from Davidson though, he just lets him get the stand up. Both wrestlers just kind of leaning into each other. Ooh. Ransom with the headlock. headlock. Davidson on that single leg. Ransom's got to get that ankle back. Davidson's got to climb that leg up. Maybe split the middle or something here. Don't be surprised if we see. Davidson a little slow to the center. Wrestlers in the collar tie again. Just kind of feeling each other out. Maybe Score again 2 1. Favor Davidson from ONU. Davidson is back on that 2 on 1. Now on a headlock. To an underhook. Bo's getting those fakes moving. Trying to get him stepping a little bit. Oh, Bo trying to dump. He got that single leg. Looks Davidson's like he's going for that single. Yeah. Pull him back into the mat. Bo's trying to pull him back to the center. Still wrestling here on the edge. Davidson doing a great job of getting those legs back. Some of the BW bench thought that should have been a stalling call on Davidson. Sort of fleeing the mat. And we're neutral still. About 45 seconds left in the first period. Both wrestlers still just feeling each other out. Davidson's got that outside tie, maybe looking for a slide by or something. Again, the score is 2 1 in favor of Davidson. Both wrestlers just hanging on each other in the middle of the mat right now. About 15 seconds left. Great shot block right there. Bo's on that, heavy on that front headlock, trying to get that single leg on the edge of the mat. Bo just trying to get a takedown, get back up on top. There it is. Two points. Two bench calling for two, and he gets it. Bo with a nice last second takedown. Those are huge, especially in college wrestling. These close matches, you get two points in the, like, the last couple five seconds. That's a big momentum shifter. Yes, it is. Davidson chooses bottom in the second period. Ransom immediately goes for that crab ride, which really became big after Logan Steber went through the ranks. Oh, yeah, Logan Steber, uh, Kyle Dake. Um, yes, Kyle Dake, uh, Taylor. Yeah, David Taylor, all real big in that like sort of crab ride, cheap tilt type deal where you're just racking up those points, and it works really well, especially in folk style now because you got that uh, that four count. So now you can get four count or four points for a four count, and that's huge. People love to see points scored. Oh really no good. doubt. And that, that you look at like like people like um, Richie Burke and whoever or who are really good on top. Those those dudes really benefit from that. We have a break in the action right now. Don't know if it's blood time or what. Yeah, a little bit of blood on Ransom's knee. We'd like to remind everyone tonight's Yellow Jacket Wrestling match is being brought to you by the Oriole Cafe, a great place for sports located at 294 North Rocky River Drive and less than two minutes from campus. They got great wings, man. Great wings. 
some experience talking right there as oh the match yeah. resumes. Ransom and Davidson both train some shots. Immediately going back to the tie up. Again, the team score is now 21 and 3 in favor of the Yellow Jackets. Davidson, nice job with that shot. Ransom just trying to whiz her out right now. Close to the end, edge of the mat. Ransom heavy on that whizzer. Davidson trying to work his way up, shelf that ankle. Climb his way up the hit, gets him two. Ref calls a stalemate. stalemate. Yeah, Davidson didn't really look like he was working to improve, and there's nothing really Ransom could have done right there to improve his position. Both look kind of stuck. This is a tight match, three to three. Halfway through the second period, no riding time. Both dudes kind of got the same sort of style of wrestling. Yeah. Ransom moving a little bit more than Davidson. Davidson taking some very calculated shots. Ransom in on a single. Davidson doing a great job sort of sprawling, funking around a little bit. He's going to try and scoot that hip to the outside. Ransom trying to come out through the bottom. Ransom splits that middle. Davidson's on, staying on that ankle trying to funk around. About 20 seconds left. We might see another stalemate before the end of this period. It's got some great action down to the wire. Ransom. Ransom coming up, keeping those hips high. That's really important, those scramble situations. Is keeping hips your hips high. high. And he has that ankle still turning in to Davidson. Davidson still got that him. ankle, though. And there's two. Oh. Ransom Dave. giving up two at the end of the period. Dave. Like I said, just like the last period, just those takedowns right at the end of the period, those are huge. Davidson did a good job not panicking right there, just waiting, waiting. Finally took his chance. Staying calm and knowing where he was. Last few matches have been very close. No doubt. Very exciting wrestling. We got Ransom on bottom. Davidson, Davidson doing that optional start again. So now the score is five to four and no riding time. Yeah, riding time doesn't look like it's gonna be a factor in this match at all. Ransom with a quick little shot, maybe trying to set something up there. Might be the last man with the takedown wins this match. Because neither wrestler's done a great job at holding down the other. No. Davidson's not even trying. He's just doing that optional start, kicking him. We haven't really seen Ransom have a chance to hold down Davidson. Davidson giving a lot of pressure. Yes, he is. Both wrestlers just kind of leaning into each other, trying to make each other feel each other's weight. Ransom doing a good job spinning him out. All the BW coaches on their feet. involved. <laughs> Coach Curley's on the edge of the mat. He looks like he wants to get out there. About a minute five left in the third period. Again, the score of 5 4 in favor of Davidson from ONU. Both of these dudes just wearing on each other, driving their feet. Davidson would try to do a little throw with both overhooks. That ransom almost with that throw, that shuck. Not quite able to keep his feet in bounds. Right there, Ransom was owning the mat. He was driving in. Davidson just giving up ground. Davidson kind of slow getting back to the center. You might think he's a little tired. Ransom's got to push the pace yeah. here. There, he, Ransom's in on a shot right off the whistle. Trying to find that leg. Davidson trying to trying to get that There's whistle. Ransom two. with two, and that's a huge two points. About with 35, only 30, se yeah, 35 seconds left in the period. Right in the middle of the mat. Ransom trying to ride tough. Davidson's got to get up here. He's got to find some energy. Ransom, Ransom throwing the legs in. Smart. He is a little high, though. Davidson just looks like he's gassed at this point. I'm surprised we're not seeing the stalemate. Yeah. I'm say there might be a stalemate coming up here soon. Ransom just got to stay in on those legs. The clock keeps ticking down. We got eight seconds. This is really coming down to the wire. And there's the stalemate. About six seconds left. Davidson needs a quick two if he thinks he has a shot of winning this match. Quick or a quick two. one. Quick one to tie. If he hits a two. That would be huge for Owen you. Bo needs a tough ride for these last six seconds if he uh, expects to come out of this match with a W. Right here, how you breaking him down? Wrist chop. Immediately right, right, right to the ankle by Ransom. Come to that ankle, Ransom pulling what up a, a match. huge victory. Great match. Neither wrestler giving up to the end.
Tyson looked a little tired at the end. Maybe his knees bothered him a little bit. Ransom with a big victory for BW. Scoring now 24-3 in favor of the Yellow Jackets. We got Zach Ram Lehman taking the forfeit. Racking up another six for the Jackets. Lehman with a great walkout song. Next up, at the 197-pound weight class, we have Evan Hickey, a junior from Wilmington. We got T-Mac, Tyler McClellan, a junior from BW. T-Mac, a returning national qualifier from BW. 19 and 12 on the season is Tyler McClellan. And Evan Hickey is 18 and 14. Pretty even stats right there with these wrestlers. T-Mac trying to work that head. And Hickey going for that underhook. McClellan, very funky wrestler sometimes. Especially at that heavy weight. He likes getting in on the ankles and rolling around. Yeah, the heavier you get, the more, the less shots you see. But Tyler still take those shots, do a little of that funky stuff. He's big into those tilts too. He likes that wrist chop, you know, Tilt him up, get a quick four on the edge of the mat. There he was going for an ankle. He's got very heavy hands. Hickey doing a good job hand fighting though. Trying to fight his way back outside, getting his ties of his own. Hickey has a great reach advantage on him. McClellan with those snaps, just working his way in and out, trying to set up those fakes, getting a little ankle hanging out there, maybe snap that up. Um, very unconventional in the way he moves. He always crosses his legs. I hated that as a wrestler. <laughs> they usually but tell you not to do that. but It I works mean, out for him. If the boot fits, wear it. I think he's got to get to his own tie-ups if he expects to get some sort of takedown. McClellan seems like he's controlling the tie-ups. A lot of attempts. McClellan, that shot, reshot attempt right there. And the score is now 30 to 3 for BW. At this point, the t uh, team score is over. BW has won this meet. And improves to 4 0 in the OAC. We got um, a big match next week in uh, Heidelberg. We even have, we got a tournament coming up on Saturday. The so tomorrow. John Soma tournament. Huge. Highly recommend coming out and checking it out. A lot of great wrestling going on. That's yeah. This match, both wrestlers just filling each other out. Go ahead, Seamus. What were you going to say about the John Soma? Oh, the John, it's a great tournament, you know. Uh, we got Pat McGinnis, uh, senior, coming back. He won the tournament last year. So, um, you know, hopefully we pick up some big Ws and bring back that team championship. How many teams are competing in it, this? Uh, I'm not really sure. Usually we have around, I want to say, around 10. As it's time expires, neither wrestler scored a point in that match. Both just leaning into each other. Lose color ties. Right now, Hickey chooses bottom. McClellan will be on top. Line it up on that left side. There, a quick escape. Yeah, McClellan only getting four seconds of riding time. Couldn't break him down or anything. McClellan still, though, pushing the pace, doing that shot, and then kind of using that hand control on the head, pushing Hickey around a little bit, set up another shot, just not able to connect. McClellan keeping the offensive, driving those feet, snapping them, changing direction, doing a great job with his motion. Hickey's got to get that sort of motion going for him. You don't really see stalling the later you go in the weight classes, but at this point, McClellan has owned the mat space. And right there, he's in on a single leg. He's going to try and run that pipe. That's his move. That's his bread and butter right there. Hickey doing a great job sort of keeping that leg. And he breaks it. Great job. Mat. On a shot on his own, McClellan's on that headlock trying to spin behind. McClellan doing a really good job on reshot attempts. Just blocking off Hickey's shot. 
Pick trying to score some offense. Hands, get out of the front headlock. McClellan's got to find a way to wear on his head or this ref's going to call a stalemate. Colin doing a good job, though, just leaning into him, making Hickey feel all of his weight. Wearing on him. Still 30 seconds left in this third, the second period. There's two for Tyler McClellan. There's about 25 seconds left. It's a big two. Right there on the edge of the mat. You keep him there for about 20 seconds. Scoring out 2-1 in favor of Tyler McClellan in the second period. About five seconds left. Tyler's just gonna keep him right there on the edge of the mat. T-Mac, a very smart wrestler. Sort of hanging out at the edge of that mat, keeping his foot in, still collecting the ride in time. And if he feels like he's getting dangerous, you know, he steps right out and gets a fresh start in the center. McClellan will be bottom. Hickey a little tired. McClellan cool. doing a good job just hanging on his head that last period. Hickey feeling it right now. Hickey trying to get out and run to the side. Maybe a little thigh, thigh pry action. There, Tyler breaks that. Scores now 3-1 in favor of McClellan. Yet another close match here late. Tyler again with heavy on that head. Staying on the edge of the mat, going back in the middle now. McClellan never leaves his stance. I love it. Some of you should teach all your wrestlers never come up. About a minute five left in this third period. Running time is not a factor. T-Max is relentless with those snaps. Doing a great job of just changing direction and ooh. Haven't really seen Hickey really uh, no, he on the offensive. No. T-Max seems to be dominating the ties. T-Max on that leg. Hickey again trying to whiz it down, getting his foot down. T-Mac trying to run that pipe. Hickey may be trying to get a little bit of a chin whip going on here. Yes, he is, it looks like. But McClellan keeping that foot in. Ooh. There's the out. 30 seconds left. Both rest are still neutral. 30 seconds. Hickey's got to get something going for him if he wants to tie it up. Yeah, the lack of urgency he seemed to show. Not really getting into any of his ties. He's not setting up no fakes. T-Mac just getting that wrist and sort of hanging out. Hickey's got to find something here. Hickey hasn't attempted any shot. There's his first one I've seen in a while. And time there's the fires. time. T-Mac with the dub. And that puts the Jackets at 33-3. to Tyler McClellan, winner of that match, 3-1. to one. And now we're at the heavyweights. Nathan Borowski, uh, Barkaski? Barkaski, a freshman from Moon Moon Area, Pennsylvania. 22 and 7 on the season against Andrew Swarovski. 16 and 3 on the season. Andrew, the football player, so not quite getting all those matches in with the rest of the team as his football season goes into the wrestling season. Then he gets a little bit of a break so his body can heal and he can get into uh, wrestling shape. This is going to be a great match. Swarovski and these, this dude love to get after it. They're very active heavyweights. Typically in heavyweight matches, you sort of see a lot of, you know, like lean in, some slide buys. Collar ties, yeah, just guys pressing into each other, maybe a trip. Using their weight. The these throw. dudes love to get after it. Swarovski likes to do those throws, man. Two very athletic heavyweights going out of here for the final match. For Kasky, very lengthy. Like to see what he would like to, uh, to use his length for in this match, maybe an ankle pick or something. Yeah, he's he's, he's very mobile. Like that head tap. Trotsky kind of got to get his motion going, you know. I don't know if I've ever seen a heavyweight match where the heavyweights haven't tied up. No. Uh, in the first minute. It looks like someone's about to super up another guy. Both wrestlers just circling each other right now. 
a lot of hand fighting. Sarasi's kind of got that like slow, methodical, almost like majestic stance where he gets into that. He steps forward and he looks like he's about to drop into a single leg. Kind of allows you to sleep a little bit. Then he changes directions, changes levels on you. Burkaski there, right there. Sarasi on that single leg. Burkaski doing a nice job fighting it off. Burkaski uses that length right there for defensive purposes. Burkaski's relentless with those head taps, sort of keeping Sarasi back. I'll tell Sarasky. you, as a former wrestler, I hated that. I hated to be the shorter guy when the guy could just keep touching my face. You got to find a way to get that wrist and climb up, man. Yeah, you try. Sarasi has to get in there a little bit closer, nullify that length difference. There he does, gets a little bit of a collar tie. Rakaski just getting away from him and immediately goes back to that forehead touch. Relentless. And there, Sarasky getting into it too a little bit. I know it's very frustrating. Yeah. You got to keep your cool. I can't imagine Sarasky having some fun out there with that. And there, he goes to his Russian. Sarasky with that Russian tie. Barkaski uh, kind of trying to you know circle out of it and he does. Burkaski used his arms immensely just to keep that distance. Good there he has a shot. shot. Sarasky on that wizard only 18 seconds left. Sarasky's got to stay heavy on that wizard. barkaski has got to try and finish this. And there's the two and for the two on the edge of the mat. And again, at the end of the period, you see a little bit more action. Guys trying to score. You got to either finish or you got to prevent getting taken down in those situations. Sarasky has five seconds to get a quick stand up or switch. Sarasky sort of likes to do that. Uh, he sort of likes to do more athletic moves. So those like roll maybe Grambies or roll rolls. They like to call a fat man, fat man roll where you hook the elbow and roll through. Not able to get that one, so we're heading to the second period with Barkaski up two zip. Swarovski will be on top, it looks like. And again, the team score is 33 to 3 in favor of BW. The team win is locked up for BW. Andrew Swarovski looking to add win number 17 on the season. While Barkaski is looking to add win number 23. Both very nice records. Barkaski, just a freshman, posting a real nice record. Barkaski, there. able to use that length to get away. Barkaski, great shot. job on that immediate turn in and shot when Strasky. Andrew was trying to kick him out. And he just uses that really long leg. No two. The ref. Waves the that one off. off the two. Back of the center. 3-0 Barkaski. You know, Barkaski Bar trying to keep that length at his advantage. Barkaski some, uh, showing some maturity out there, not getting a little uh, upset about that call, especially for a freshman. You know, you might get a little upset that you didn't go your way. Score now 3-0 in favor of Barkaski still. Barkaski keeping that motion up, yeah. very active on that head. They're just slapping each other now. The ref talking to both of them. He's telling them you can't slap. Head taps are fine. Once you get into that slapping motion, though, it's a no-go. It's a little, you can see uh, Swarovski getting very obviously frustrated. That reach is a great advantage for Barkaski right now. You'd like to see Swarovski maybe, you know, post up one of those head taps, try and get on a single leg. Maybe pop that elbow real quick. Mm -hmm. And you'd like to see Barkaski do something with these head taps. Kind of lulls you to sleep with him. He hits you so many times, you don't really know what's going on. No. Nice then thing you know he's on your leg. Very true. About 30 seconds left in the second period. Swarovski trying to tie up, bring him in a little bit. And then Burkaski doing a great job getting hand control and getting away and immediately going back to the taps. Swarovski on that underhook. And then Burkaski on a shot again. Swarovski doing a nice job of fighting that off. 
I'd like to see him take a shot right there when he got away. Mm -hmm. Five seconds winding down the second period. Barkaski still up three to zero. Going to the third period now. Ryan time not a factor at all. Sarowski picks it down. Barkaski obviously has that length. For a second I thought he was gonna do the optional yeah. start. <laughs> A little aggressive on the start there for Barkaski, but Sarowski's up. He needs to get his hippos away to get one. There's the There's one. One. Take down, ties it back up. And immediately, Barkaski goes right back to the head taps. Relentless. And just posting up and keeping him away. Doing a good job about not locking his elbow out for that elbow pop. Sarowski's stalking. There. On that headlock. He has to use that. He has to get Barkaski's hips down. Sarowski uh, trying to wear on his head a little bit. Maybe a little too late. I'd like to see Andrew push the pace a little bit towards the ends of this match. And there, Barkaski in on another deep shot. Sarowski got caught reaching. Andrew doing a good job keeping him away. Sarowski doing a great job fighting off this single leg. A lot of good action on the edge. You got ONU's bench calling for two. Barkaski taking him to the center. Sarowski with the funk roll. The he big man's moving. He might have it. Sarowski's Bar got to elevate. Barkaski's got to move. He has to move. Move with a stalemate. Barkaski's doing a good job staying in great position on that ankle. Sarowski trying to split the middle here. He needs this too. He's got to do something before they call a stalemate. There's about 30 Barkaski seconds in there's another two, two for Barkaski. The freshman doing a really good job. Does not look like a freshman right now. Scores now 5-1 in favor of Barkaski. Barkaski on that single leg again. Keeps a little down. bit tired now. Tried that fat man roll. Yeah, seven seconds. He's got to. He's got to open up the bag of tricks here and turn it upside down. There's the optional start. I think Bukowski's just going to use his uh, length, yeah. keep him away, stay safe. Let's see if sarasi has got anything in the bag here. Bukowski seems like he's got this match down. Yes. The clock expires. And. The Polar Bears pick up their second win of the night on a 5-2 win by Nathan Bukaski, a freshman from Moon Area High School. Boom goes the dynamite. BW finishes up this match, winning 36 to six. Oh wait, 33 to six. As again. ONU picks up that last W. Yes, and again, Paul Wallace moves to 4-0 on the OAC and improves upon the RA record-setting season for team wins, dual wins on the season. Uh, beating uh, last year's record, which was set by last year's team, which may beat the record, which was set by the year prior by that team. So every year is sort of breaking that um, dual meet record. Since, Just getting uh, better and better. Yeah. All right, Seamus, before we go, would you like to tell the people about these upcoming tournaments and meets? Oh, so uh, Saturday I was talking about we have the SUMA, which is um, sort of, it's fun. It's our home tournament. Everybody kind of, you know, Shows up for that. And um, then we got uh, Heidelberg next Tuesday, which will be a huge OAC match. That'll be here at BW, Usbrung Gymnasium at 7.30. Again, your final tonight is 33-6. to 6. Our next wrestling broadcast will be Tuesday, February 7th, when BW hosts Heidelberg University at 7.30. I'm Kay Mickley, joined by Seamus. Thank you for joining me tonight. Our nice final again. Me. 33 to 6. Thank you, Seamus. Have a good night.